ASML's empire crumbles. China's multi-front assault on lithography. Three years ago, the CEO of ASML made a bold claim. Even with the blueprints, China couldn't build an EUV lithography machine. At the time, no one dared to argue. ASML held the key to the advanced chip-making process, with its unique EUV technology for 7 nanometers and below. It seemed untouchable. But who would have thought that in just three short years, China would launch a multi-front assault in the lithography field? Across multiple technical routes, China has made a monumental leap from catching up to breaking through. The reversal came so fast. How did they do it? The super scalpel for carving chips. To understand this, you can think of a lithography machine as a super scalpel for carving chips. The circuit patterns on a chip are a masterpiece of nanometer-level art. If you were to magnify a human hair to the width of a football field, the circuit lines on a chip would be less than half a meter wide. In this microscopic world, this scalpel must be precise down to the atomic level to engrave millions of intricate circuits onto a silicon wafer. Faced with Western technological blockades, Chinese research teams have found a different path simultaneously advancing multiple technological routes, much like mastering different schools of carving. Nanoimprint lithography is like movable type printing, directly transferring patterns to a silicon wafer with a mold, greatly improving production efficiency. Electron beam lithography is like a precision handheld pen, allowing for single atom level control, often used for developing cutting edge chips. Improved traditional lithography is like an upgraded carving knife, constantly pushing the limits of existing processes through light source and lens improvements. These different routes complement each other, working together like a team of scalpels to carve out China's chip-making legend, the revolutionary breakthroughs. What's even more impressive is how the team at the Shanghai Institute of Optics and Fine Mechanics, SIOM, took a different approach to overcome the long-standing U.S. technology blockade. They tackled the choke point, of the extreme ultraviolet EUV light source with solid state laser technology. Traditional EUV light source technology has long been a monopoly held by the US and its allies, and its development is as difficult as climbing Mount Everest. But the SIOM team, through independent innovation, successfully increased the conversion efficiency of its solid state laser EUV light source to 3.42%. While this number may seem unremarkable, it is monumental. Although it hasn't yet reached the 5% commercial standard, it's sufficient to support a stable prototype, laying a solid foundation for future technological iterations. In the field of nanoimprint technology, Purite technology pulled off a stunning overtake. Their independently developed nanoimprint equipment achieved a breakthrough with a line width of less than 10 nanometers, surpassing Japan's Canon, which had long been the industry leader. Canon had a head start in the nanoimprint race, leading the global market for more than a decade. Pyroite Technologies' comeback not only broke the technological monopoly of an international giant, but also marked China's qualitative leap from a follower to a leader in a key area of semiconductor manufacturing equipment. These groundbreaking advancements are like a character in a wuxia novel, an unknown swordsman who defeats the martial arts leader with his own unique style. It's a truly thrilling story. Let's delve deeper into how China achieved this technological breakthrough, why Western countries find it difficult to stop this wave of innovation, and what tangible benefits these breakthroughs will bring to ordinary people. ASML's Monopolistic Rise and Fall ASML's path to monopoly wasn't an overnight success. In the 1980s, it was just a small company under Philips. It later surged to the top with support from TSMC's Immersion Lithography, Solution and the Intel-led EUV LLC organization. It pushed aside former giants like Nikon and Canon. By 2020, ASML had sold 258 lithography systems, generating 13.98 billion euros in revenue, with an average price of over 400 million yuan per unit. Its exclusive monopoly on EUV lithography machines for 7 nanometers and below processes gave it the undisputed top spot in the global market. But just when ASML thought it could rest easy, Chinese companies launched their multi-front assault. In the field of nanoimprint, Japan's Canon had been secretly developing the technology since 2004, 
acquiring a related company in 2014. Their equipment achieved a line width of 14 nanometers, corresponding to a traditional 5 nanometers process, and generated about $1.65 billion in lithography revenue in 2024. But China's Purite technology came from behind. Their first independently designed and developed PLSR series nanoimprint equipment achieved a line width of less than 10 nanometers and has completed R&D verification and delivered to customers in multiple fields. This is a classic case of a latecomer overtaking the leader in a race. In electron beam lithography, Zhejiang University's Shiji has a precision of 0.6 nanometers and a line width of 8 nanometers. It can directly etch without a mask, making it particularly suitable for quantum chip R&D. Previously, domestic research institutions had difficulty obtaining such equipment due to international export controls, but now China can build its own. In traditional lithography, Shanghai Microelectronics Equipment, SME, SRF lithography machine has an overlay accuracy of less than 8 nanometers. The Ministry of Industry and Information Technology's 2024 catalog includes related domestic lithography machines, meaning that the full process for mature chips of 28 nanometers and above is expected to be localized. For the EUV light source, ASML's EUV lithography machines use CO2 laser light sources made by the U.S. company Symer. In contrast, Harbin Institute of Technology achieved a stable output power of 30 watts with DPP technology, and Tsinghua University is advancing its research on SSMB light sources. Even more impressively, the Shanghai Institute of Optics and Fine Mechanics used a solid-state laser to create an LPP UV light source with a conversion efficiency of 3.42%, surpassing teams from the Netherlands and Switzerland. While not yet commercialized, its significance is immense. Rethinking the strategy In the fierce competition of the global lithography industry, China's multi-pronged, simultaneous approach is a highly strategic and breakthrough solution. ASML's long-standing monopoly in the high-end market, based on a single technological path, built a solid technical barrier in the short term. However, it also put all its eggs in one basket. When external technology controls escalate or R&D bottlenecks are encountered, its supply chain resilience and technical iteration capability face severe challenges. In contrast, since the Made in China 2025 strategy was proposed, China has simultaneously laid out multiple technological routes, including deep ultraviolet, DUV, lithography, dual-stage technology, and high numerical aperture systems, forming an innovative matrix of multi-pronged assault. SME's 28 nanometers DUV lithography machine has been mass-produced and delivered. China Electronics Technology Group Corporation, CTC broke through the 193 nanometers immersion lithography light source technology. Tsinghua University's new particle beam lithography solution is even considered a potential breakthrough for next-generation lithography. This diversified attack strategy not only successfully broke the U.S. export restrictions on equipment below 14 nanometers in 2023, but also boosted the market share of Chinese-made lithography machines from less than 5% to 18%. From a global industry perspective, China's technological breakthroughs are bringing more possibilities to the lithography market. The single technological route dominated by ASML once forced global chip companies to passively accept its pace of technological upgrades. Now, alternative solutions offered by Chinese companies are reshaping the industry's discourse. Today, Companies like Samsung in Korea and TSMC have begun to evaluate the purchase of Chinese-made lithography machines, signaling that the global lithography market is about to bid farewell to the old order of single dominance and usher in a new era of parallel development with multiple technical routes. From arrogance to innovation ASML's market monopoly wasn't just built on technology. It was also built on a customer alliance. It allowed major clients like TSMC and Intel to buy stakes, forming a vested interest group. ASML would adjust its technology based on customer needs, selling expensive lithography machines without worrying about demand. In 2020, the 46 units sold to mainland China were not even the most advanced EUV models. But ASML grew a bit arrogant, believing China couldn't build its own. 
This arrogance, however, became China's motivation. Previously, Western companies relied on their first mover advantage, feeling secure with their technological lead, but this led to stagnation. In contrast, Chinese companies have turned pressure into motivation. Government policies, research institutions for R&D, and companies for production have formed a virtuous cycle. This model can not only break through technological blockades but also turn advanced technology into affordable products for the public, unlike the Western model that treats technology as a cash cow, driving up prices to an exorbitant level. This is what technological innovation should look like, benefiting more people. China's comeback in the lithography field is no accident. It is the result of the combined efforts of researchers, companies, and national policies. This not only breaks the technological monopoly of Europe and the US but also injects new vitality into global technological development. As the technology continues to mature, we will see even more pleasant surprises in the future. What are your expectations for the future of Chinese lithography? Or would you like to know more details about a specific technology? Please leave a comment below. Thanks for reading, and see you next time.